Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. In this episode, we set sail on a grand nautical adventure that sparked extensive exploration of lands previously unknown to Europeans. Join me as we examine the great age of discovery and the important role of celestial navigation. Technological advancements that were important to the age of exploration were the adoption of the magnetic compass and advances in ship design. Ships grew in size, required smaller crews, and were able to sail longer distances without stopping. This led to significant lower long-distance shipping costs. Prior to the age of exploration, European sailing had been primarily close to land, guided by port and coastal nautical charts. These sea atlases specified proven ocean routes guided by coastal landmarks as sailors departed from a known point, followed a compass heading, and tried to identify their location by its landmarks. For the first oceanic exploration, Western Europeans used the compass, as well as progressive new advances in cartography and astronomy. Arab navigational tools like the Astrolab and Quadrant were used for celestial navigation using astronomical charts plotting the location of the stars over a distinct period of time. These tables revolutionized navigation, allowing the calculation of latitude. Exact longitude, however, remained elusive, and mariners struggled to determine it for centuries. European exploration outside the Mediterranean Sea started in the early 1400s and followed many currents that eventually led, before the century's end, across the Atlantic Ocean to North American shores. The age of exploration led to the rise of global trade and colonial empires, instigating contact between the Old World continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa with North America. These interactions produce the exchange and transfer of a wide variety of plants, animals, food, human populations, culture, and communicable diseases between the Eastern and Western hemispheres. The age of exploration allowed the mapping of the planet, resulting in a new world view and distant civilizations coming into contact. The era also saw the military conquest and economic dominance of foreign lands, as well as the spread of European civilization and its advanced technology. As a wider variety of global luxury commodities enter the European markets by sea, previous European networks for luxury goods stagnated. The Atlantic trade largely supplanted pre-existing Italian and German trading powers, which had relied on their Baltic, Russian, and Islamic trade links. The European economic center thus shifted from the Mediterranean to Western Europe. The new commodities also caused social change, as sugar, spices, silks, chinaware, precious metals, and jewels entered the luxury markets of Europe. Between the 11th and 15th centuries, the European economy was transformed by the interconnecting of river and sea trade routes, causing Europe to become one of the world's most prosperous trading networks. Maritime Italian states, mainly Venice, Genoa, and Pisa, dominated trade in the eastern Mediterranean, with Italian merchants becoming wealthy and politically influential. Further changing the mercantile situation in the eastern Mediterranean was the waning of Byzantine naval power, whose leaders had made several notable treaties and concessions with Italian traders, permitting the use of Byzantine Christian ports. The Norman conquest of England in 1066 allowed for peaceful trade on the North Sea. A confederation of merchant guilds and their towns in northern Germany along the North Sea and Baltic Sea was instrumental in commercial development of the region. In the 12th century, the Low Countries produced the finest quality textiles in northern Europe, which encouraged Italian merchants to sail there directly. A prelude to the Age of Discovery was a series of European expeditions crossing Eurasia by land in the late Middle Ages. Although the Mongols had threatened Europe with pillage and destruction, Mongol states also unified much of Eurasia and, from 1206 on, the Pax Mongolica allowed safe trade routes and communication lines stretching from the Middle East to China. A series of Europeans took advantage of these networks to explore eastwards. Most were Italians, like Venetian merchant Marco Polo as trade between Europe and the Middle East was controlled mainly by the Maritime Republics. 
The close Italian links to the Levant raised great curiosity and commercial interest in countries which lay further east. These overland journeys along the so-called Silk Road, however, had little immediate effect. The Mongol Empire collapsed almost as quickly as it formed, and soon the route to the east became more difficult and dangerous. The Black Death of the 14th century also blocked travel and trade. The rise of the Ottoman Empire further limited the possibilities of European overland commerce. The Republic of Venice and neighboring maritime city-states held the monopoly of European commerce with the Middle East. The silk and spice trade, involving incense, herbs, drugs, and opium, made these Mediterranean city-states phenomenally rich. Spices, imported from Asia and Africa, were among the most expensive and demanded products of the Middle Ages, as they were used in medieval medicine, religious rituals, cosmetics, perfumery, as well as food additives and preservatives. Muslim traders and Arab sailors dominated maritime routes throughout the Indian Ocean, controlling shipping to Far East source regions and trading emporiums in India. From Persian Gulf ports, overland routes led to the Mediterranean coasts. Venetian merchants distributed the goods through Europe until the rise of the Ottoman Empire that eventually led to the conquest of Constantinople in 1453 barring Europeans from important combined land-sea routes. The fall of Constantinople to the hands of the Ottomans was thus a blow to Christendom and the established business relations linking with the East. The Portuguese were the first European nation to systematically encourage maritime commerce by exploring foreign shores under the sponsorship of Prince Henry the Navigator, who encouraged the development of a new, much lighter ship, the Caravel, which would sail farther and faster and above all, was highly maneuverable and could sail into the wind. To ensure their monopoly on trade, Europeans, beginning with the Portuguese, attempted to install a Mediterranean system of trade which used military might and intimidation to divert commerce through ports they controlled. Long-standing nautical myths warned of oceanic monsters or sailing off the edge of the world, but Prince Henry's navigation challenged such beliefs by probing southeastward along the African coast to see whether it was possible to reach the lucrative markets of the Indies by sea. A crucial breakthrough occurred in 1488 when Portugal rounded the southern tip of Africa, then sailed east, establishing that the Indian Ocean was accessible from the Atlantic, proving false the view that had existed since antiquity that the Indian Ocean was landlocked. Portugal's neighboring fellow Iberian rival and emerging modern Spain became fully committed to the search for new trade routes overseas. In 1492, the Spanish conquered the Moorish Kingdom of Granada, which had been providing it with African goods through tribute. In the hope of bypassing Portugal's monopoly on West African sea routes, a newly united Spain decided to fund a daring expedition to reach southeastern Asia by traveling west. Let me tell you about the channel that presents the videos of each episode in our series. The YouTube channel's name is Timeline, and its tagline is The Fascinating Chronology of Events from the Big Bang to Modern Human History. You can find the direct link to the channel in the show notes or at my website, markvinet.com. The Timeline series of videos is an exhilarating journey all the way back to the scientific view of creation. In order to understand the human experience, Timeline attempts to voyage back to the beginning of time and trace the incidents that set in motion a series of events that help explain the world we now live in. This fascinating historical and scientific journey follows an unpredictable path of exciting epochs, including the Big Bang, the creation of our solar system, the formation of Earth, the first appearance of life, the dinosaurs, the evolution of humans, the first civilizations, and modern history. As mentioned, Timeline is a journey back to the scientific view of creation. Each video edition explores an episode in this tumultuous yet incredible voyage through time and space, while tracing the influence and importance of key events that in turn set the scene for our modern species and the great human struggle to survive. Here's a popular audio sample of the eclectic topics to be found on the Timeline video channel. 
about the solar system, an important part of night sky reference points for transoceanic celestial navigation. This edition of Timeline presents the new solar system. The formation of our solar system is situated on the timeline at 4.6 billion years ago. To put this in perspective, the Big Bang occurred 13.8 billion years ago and the dinosaur age began about 230 million years ago. The study and understanding of our solar system has developed and evolved over thousands of years with many historical advancements. The Earth-centered perspective of ancient astronomers eventually gave way to the Sun-centered perspective of the Renaissance. During the Industrial Age, advances in mathematics and science emphasized gravity's crucial role in solar system motions and structure. The Space Age then permitted exploration and detailed studies that led to major revisions to established learnings. Recent advances have uncovered a whole new class of objects among and beyond our planets, thereby greatly expanding our knowledge of the solar system's objects and changing our viewpoint on how those objects are organized. This shift has developed a new paradigm and modern perspective of the fundamental understanding and structure of our solar system. Until recently, the traditional focus was on the Sun and planets, with some reference to moons, asteroids and comets. A new 21st century view organizes the solar system's objects into six groups according to their similar characteristics and properties. Although many diagrams and charts exist, Timeline's modern understanding of the solar system is presented in a simple ringed model that is easy to comprehend and fun to replicate for school projects. Now, let's explore each ring in this model. Our Sun is a unique object and the only star in the solar system. The Sun has its place at the center with every object in our solar system orbiting around it. The rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, travel along elliptical orbits. They are medium-sized objects with few moons. The asteroid belt, situated primarily in the region between Mars and Jupiter, consists of small rocks that are on tilted and elliptical orbits. The giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, follow elliptical orbits and have deep gaseous atmospheres with many moons and rings. The Kuiper Belt, named for astronomer Gerard Kuiper, is a newly observed and explored region beyond Neptune where thousands of small icy objects and large dwarf planets travel in elliptical and tilted orbits. This ring contains many comets that orbit the Sun. Pluto naturally fits in the Kuiper belt alongside other objects that share the same characteristics. The Oort cloud, named for astronomer Jan Oort, is a vast spherical region of trillions of small icy objects that exist in the outermost reaches of the solar system. This cloud of particles is theorized to be the remains of the material that formed the Sun and planets. The outer part of this ring is only loosely bound to our solar system and thus is easily affected by the gravitational pull both of passing stars, nebula and our own Milky Way galaxy. These forces occasionally dislodge comets from their orbits within the cloud and send them towards the inner solar system or out beyond our solar system into interstellar space. Understanding our solar system is an exciting and continuing journey of discovery. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and look forward to meeting you again soon along the timeline. Next time you go outside on a clear night, look upwards and marvel at the celestial map that once guided the great sailors of the Age of Exploration. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you enjoyed this episode.